Praise the Lord, church. Good evening, everybody. It's a blessing to be back with us again on another beautiful fall day that the Lord has made. Hope everybody had a wonderful and safe uh, weekend. Amen. Um, I have a home going this year. Our sister Veronica Gates' husband uh, passed. Now, uh, that sister, uh, Terry Gaines' father, his name is Brother Theodore Gates. Amen. And uh, his home going will be on Friday at 11 o'clock at H.H. H. Roberts' funeral home. The walkthrough will be from uh, 1030 uh, until 1045. Amen. Uh, so we want to hold them up in a lot of prayer. That's Sister uh, Veronica Gates and Sister Terry Gaines, uh, who are very faithful members of our church. Amen. And also we want to uh, hold up Sister uh, Phyllis Lane. Now, as you well know, Sister Lane had uh, back surgery here a few weeks ago, and uh, then she had to go through a very extensive rehab, and she's still in a lot of pain. So we want to continue to hold her up uh, in a lot of prayer. As well as Sister Virginia Earn. Amen. Uh, she and, and Reverend Earn. Uh, she is still uh, dealing with her a, a lot of pain as well. So we want to continue to hold her up. As well as all of those others on our prayer uh, and healing list. So as well as our pastor. Keep Pastor Hill up in a lot of prayer as well. Amen. And also continue to pray for each other, pray for our church as well. Okay, now, since we have uh, been out because of this COVID-19, uh, many of us have kind of slacked off on giving. Now, uh, just let me say this, this is really not a time to slack off. Amen. All of our church expenses continue uh, to kind of go on. Amen. Uh, just a few weeks ago, uh, we had to put a new roof on the church. And, and that took a big bite of, out of our budget as well. So uh, let us continue to be faithful and supporting our church. Uh, everything that uh, we do when we're in church still has to be done. Amen. We have to keep the heat on. We have to keep the lights on. Of course, the heat, as it begin, the weather begins to get a little colder. The, the heating bills kind of rise. And uh, but we need the heat to stay on because of our uh, equipment and so forth here in the church. So uh, let us just be faithful and, and so keep supporting our church. And if you can, and all of those of who can and will, uh, we'd appreciate it if you would kind of help us out uh, on the roof as well. Amen. And God bless you for that. All right. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Dear wise and almighty God, it is in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ that we come into your presence as humbly as we know how, Father, just to say thank you. Thank you, dear Lord, for blessing us and taking care of us from seen and unseen danger. We thank you, dear Lord, for our family. We thank you for our friends, even our enemies. Thank you, dear Lord, for the bad days, for they help us to better appreciate the goodness, dear Lord. And then, dear Lord, we ask you to just mend us where we're broken and make us strong, dear Lord, where we're weak. Give us, dear Lord, the faith to believe that our tomorrow will be brighter than our yesterday. Keep us in the palm of your hand, Father. Give us the faith to keep holding on. When everything around us, dear Lord, seems to be crushing down on us. So we just thank you, dear Lord, for allowing us to rise up early this morning, dear Lord, in our right mind, with our mental facilities. And we thank you for bringing us back into your presence once again to study your word. So we ask your blessings upon those who uh, we have asked for prayer, dear Lord. We ask your blessings upon uh, the Gaines family, dear Lord. And we just pray that you would bless that family in a special way. Continue to bless those on our sick and our healing list, dear Lord. Continue to 
Give them your peace, Father, that peace that surpasses all understanding. As you to continue to bless Pastor Hill, Father. Hold them up to the Lord every way he stands in need. Bless our church family, Father. All those of whom we haven't seen, or some of many we haven't even talked to since we uh, were shut down from this covert virus. We ask you to bless them, Father, in every way they stand in need. And give us the patience to wait upon you. And we'll be so careful to give you all the praise and the glory. This we pray in your name and for your sake. Amen. All right. Let us get after our lesson. Now we are in the book of Romans. Still in chapter one. We kind of introduced it last week. So we want to pick back up here. I want to start today on here in this first chapter of Romans. I want to begin looking at verses 14 through 16. So if you have your Bibles, I would like for you to go there with me. Romans chapter four, chapter one, and verses 14 through 16. Amen. I am a debtor both to the Greek and to the barbarians, both to the wise and to the unwise. So as much as is in me, I am ready to preach the gospel to you who are in Rome also. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes, for the Jew first, and also for the Greek. Amen. I am a debtor. I am ready. I am not ashamed. Amen. Paul said. So we ourselves would do well to emulate Paul's example here in our lives. Now, I want to read just a little bit farther here, if you will. Let us, let us look at this verse of 17 and see what he said there. He says, for in the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. Amen. The just shall live by faith. Now, we have here the theme of the letter, the gospel on faith and not works. And available, Paul says, to all, not just the Jew. So Paul explains here in Romans how God uh, can both uh, can be both just and justified. Amen. That that he he he, he is he, he can be he can make sinners righteous. Amen. And still uphold his own uh, holy law. He quotes here from uh, Hebrews chapter two and verse four, where it said the just shall live by faith. Amen. And we also know there in that second Corinthians chapter five and verse seven said we walk by faith and not by sight. Amen. We walk by faith and not by sight. So now I'll, let us read just a little farther here. Uh, I want to look at verses 18 through 23. Now, for your edification here, I am reading this text from the King James uh, translation. Amen. We want to look at uh, verses 18 through 23 here in this first chapter of the book of Romans. Amen. It says, for the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Verse 19, because that which may be known of God is manifest in them. For God has showed it unto them, verse 20, for the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, 
so that they are without excuse. Verse 21, because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God. Neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was dark. Verse 22, professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. Verse 23, and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into the image made like to corruptible man and the birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. Amen. Now, we begin here the first section of the letter. Uh, which discusses sin. Amen? The first section of this text, uh, of this book here, it discusses sin. So in these closing verses here of this first chapter, Paul explains here how the Gentiles got into the awful darkness that engulfed them and how God wrath revealed against them. Now, I want you to note the steps downward in the Gentiles' history here. Here in verses 18 through 20, where they, the, the word says they, they knew God. Now, God given them a twofold generation of himself in them. When I say a twofold generation of himself in them, I mean in their conscience. Amen? And unto them, he says, which means creation. So verse 19, you see, man did not begin, you see, with ignorance and then gradually worked his way up to intelligence. Amen. He began with a blazing revelation of the power and the wisdom of God. You see. And, and he turned his back on it. Amen? And he turned his back on it. Now, God had revealed himself from the very time of creation. So, so that people who have never heard the gospel are still without excuse. So you see, uh, if, if you never heard the gospel before, it doesn't give you an excuse Amen. To sin. It's just like the uh, secular law. Uh, just because you don't know what the law is uh, on, on, on traffic lights and so forth, it doesn't give you uh, a pass or an excuse to say, well, uh, I didn't know what the law was. Amen. The law does not give us an excuse. So, so it, it, it's the same way here with God's word. Amen. If you never heard the gospel, you are still without an excuse, okay? Now, we're going to be looking at how God judged such people. Uh, we'll, we'll take that up as we move over in, into this uh, second chapter here uh, of Romans. Uh, we're going to show us how God judged such people here. Amen? So I want us to pay very close attention and follow very closely along with us uh, throughout the study. Amen? Now, here in verses 21 through 23 of this first chapter of Romans, it says, they glorified him not as God. Amen? You see, vain thinking and foolish reasoning turn men from the truth to lies. Amen? We, 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 we see indifference leading to ingratitude and resulting in ignorance. Okay? Uh, we see this going on all the time today. Amen? Foolish thinking, vain thinking, and, and, and foolish reasoning, you see, and, and turning the truth of God's word into a lie. Amen? People today, you see, they bow before the Greek and the Roman philosophers and honor their words above the word of God. But Paul calls all these philosophers empty imaginations. 
Amen. Empty imaginations and time of ignorance. Here in verse 21, if you follow along with me, and I pray that you are. Here in verse 21. So, so the next step was idolatry, honoring the creature, including man, rather than the creator. Amen. Sometimes you see, we'll, if you're not careful, you find yourself honoring everything and everybody except God. All right. Now, uh, let me take you to another passage of scripture here. If you have your Bible with you, and I hope you do. Uh, I want you to turn with me to the, to the book of Acts. We want to go look at the 17th chapter of Acts in verses 30. Amen. Acts chapter 17, verse 30. In the times of this ignorance, God winked at, but now commanded all men everywhere to repent. Now, depending on what translation you're looking at, this word here, winked, it means he overlooked. Amen? He overlooked their ignorance, but now he commanded all men everywhere to repent. You see, many times God will give us time to repent. Amen? But many times we just take God for granted. We'll just keep doing the same thing over and over and over again. Amen? And then after a while, God, he'll turn us over. Amen? And I'll show you that later on as we move on down into the text. He'll turn us over to a reprobate mind. So, so let me ask us a question here. You see, are, are your sins covered or are they covered up? Amen? Are they covered or are they covered up? See, you can continue to cover up your sins, but see, the best thing to do is confess your sins. That's what the word of God tells us there in 1 John 1 and 9. He said, if you confess your sins, he said, I am faithful and just to forgive you of your sins and then to lend you of all unrighteousness. Amen? You see, sometimes we can we can, we can cover up our sin, but see, when you start covering up your sins, it's just like covering up lies. You just got to keep covering them up. You got to keep covering them up. You got to keep telling one lie to cover up another lie. And then you got to cover up that lie to cover up another lie. After a while, you know, accumulated so many lies. Hey, man, you forgot the last lie that you told. So it's the best thing to do is just confess your sins and then allow God to cleanse you, you see, and then bring you back into a right relationship uh, with him. Amen? So, 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 so they changed the truth of God. You see, uh, the Bible says they changed the truth of God. Well, you, you, you can change whatever you want to change, but you can never change the truth of God. Amen? Okay, now I want you to turn with me once again here. Let's look at verses 24 through 25 of this first chapter uh, here in Romans. Uh, verses 24 through 25, where it says, Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their bodies between themselves. Verse 25, who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the creature more than the creator. Amen? Serve the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. Now, as I said before, you cannot change the truth of God's word. You might use whatever uh, word you want to use to try and change the truth of God's word, but the God's word will never be changed. He tells us that there in Matthew chapter 5 and verse 18, he says, uh, not heaven and earth will pass away before one jot or one tittle of his word pass away. I'm kind of paraphrasing somewhat, but that's pretty much what he said. Amen. You can never change the truth of God's word. Now, this word here, changed, should really read exchanged. Amen. People replace God's truth with Satan lies. Okay, so what is Satan lies? Worshiping the creature and not the creator, 
worshiping man instead of God, worshiping things instead of Christ. Amen? You see, if we're not careful, we'll find ourselves worshiping all these things and then neglect God. God is the only one that's worthy uh, to be worshiped. You see, we can't worship things because things will pass away. The word of God will never pass away. Amen? You see, Satan tempted Jesus uh, to do this very same thing over there in Matthew chapter 4 and verses 8 through 11. You see, he tempted Jesus like that. Now I want you to know here in verses 18 of our text here in, in the Romans chapter 1, the Gentile held down the truth and they exchanged the truth for a lie. Amen? People do it all the time. We see it in our government today. Amen? They, they just take the truth and, and just shred it and turn it into a lie. Well, the truth believed and obeyed what it will do, it will set us free. The truth believed and then obeyed, it will set us free according to John 8.31 and 8.32. It said the truth will make us free. You see, the truth rejected and disobeyed, you know what it does? It makes us a slave. It makes us slaves to the lie. Amen? Now, here in verses uh, 26 through 32, it, it, tell, it talks about where they rejected the knowledge of God. And that's what people do today. People, a lot of people just reject, outright reject the knowledge of God. Amen? Uh, let's look at these next few verses here in verses 26 uh, through verses 32 here in Romans chapter 1. It says, for this cause God gave them up unto vile affections. For even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. Verse 27. And likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust one another, towards one another. Men with men, working that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error, which was meat. Now this word here, recompense, uh, if you're looking at the King James, it means penalty. Amen? That which is, he said, is unseemly and receiving in themselves the recompense or the penalty of their error, which was meat. Verse 28. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. Now this word here, reprobate, it means reject. See, you know, once you continually uh, disobey God's word and keep doing things your way. Eventually, uh, God will turn you over, as the Bible tells, to a reprobate mind to do the things which are not convenient, he says here. So verses 29, he says, being filled with all unrighteousness and fornication, and wickedness and covetousness and maliciousness, full of envy, murder and debate, Deceit, malignity, worshippers, uh, amen, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, bolsters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents. You see, verse uh, 31, without understanding, uh, covenant breakers, without natural affection, uh, implicated which means not to be uh, appeased or quiet, unmerciful. Verse 32, who knowing the judgment of God that they which commit such things are worthy of death. Not only do the same, 
but have pleasure in them that do them. Amen? Have pleasure in them that do them. Now, these people had begun with a clear knowledge of God. A clear knowledge of God. Right here in verse 19 and verse 21. And his judgment against sin, as he tells us here in verse 32. But now they reach the lowest level of their downward fall. Amen. They had reached the lowest level of their downward fall. Amen. You see, they couldn't go no, they couldn't go no, couldn't go no lower. You know, listen, it's hard to fall off the floor. Amen. They did not even want to have knowledge of God. It, it, you know, the Bible tells us in Psalms chapter uh, 14 and 1 says, in his heart, the fool says in his heart, there is no God. Amen. The fool says in his heart that there is no God. It's sad to see these tragic results of this decline. Amen. Evolutionists and so forth want us to believe that humans have evolved rather than being created. Amen? From primitive, ignorant, beast-like forms into a marvelous creature that we are today. You see, let me share this with you. Uh, my wife and I used to uh, do foster care. And we had a young man, a little Caucasian, or in our home. And uh, he seemed to be sitting at my desk one day studying, and he sat there, and he asked me a question. Uh, he said, he said, why do y'all say that we were created? I thought it was a pretty good question. And uh, I said to him, I said, well, we are. We were created. God created us. And he said, that's not what we're taught in our church. Well, uh, some of the rules are is when you have these uh, children in your home, uh, you cannot teach them anything contrary to their religion. Okay, that that's a, that's against the that's against the rules. You can't do that. But since he posed that question to me, I had to answer him, and, and I told him, I said, "Well, uh, the Bible says that we were created, Amen, created in the image of God. We did not evolve." from the bottom of the sea, as, as he thought, or as he had been taught. Amen? So so, so, so these people, uh, they had begun with a clear knowledge of God and, and his judgment against sin. Okay? Now, as I said, we were, we were created. We did not evolve from the bottom of the sea, as these evolutionists want, us, want you to believe. We were created into these into a marvelous people that we are today. You see, Paul says just the opposite. He says, man began the highest of God's creatures, but made himself into a beast. Amen. God didn't create us in, as no beast. Man made himself into a beast. You see, uh, he says here in that, as I was sharing with you about this young man, I told him right, right there in Genesis chapter 1 and verse 26, where it says, God said, let us make man into our image. Amen? You see, so, so we were not, we didn't evolve. We was created by a loving God who loves us, gave himself for us, went to the cross and died for us. Amen? You see? Now, let me show you some of the some of the judgments of God for all these sins. Amen. It says here in verses 24 and 25, it said, God gave them up to uncleanness and idolatry. Amen. Right there in verse 24 and 25 of our text here in, in our Romans. And secondly, he said, God gave them over to vile passions. Amen. Verse 26 and 27. And, and, and thirdly, he said, God gave them over to a reprobate mind, as I shared with you a moment ago. That word reprobate means to be rejected. 
You see, God let you go so far, and then after you just going to willfully and wantonly and intentionally uh, disobey God's word, God will eventually give you over to a reprobate mind. Now, you, will, you know, but God will receive you back into a relationship with him, but you have to go to God and ask for forgiveness. Ask God to forgive you. Amen. And then repent from your sins, turn away from your sins, and God will receive you back in to his loving arms and wash you whiter than snow. Amen. Just like I showed you there in that first John 1 and 9. Amen. Now, so that's that in verse 28 where he said he turned them over to a reprobate mind. You see, God gave them up. He will give us up. If we if he don't see that we're just, you know, hell bent on doing it our way, he will give us up. This is the revelation of the wrath of God, as he tells us here in verse 18. You see, the sins listed here are too vile to define or, or even to discuss. Amen. Yet they are practiced today around the world. And guess what? With the approval of society. Amen. You know, I, I, I look sometimes and I, I see where beautiful women and American uh, uh, men and so forth. The next time you look around, they got divorced them, and now they're married to say they're married to other women, other men, and married to other men. Amen. The Lord said, All of this stuff is unnatural. Amen. You see, and all of this stuff is sanctioned by society. You see, listen, people know that sin will be judged, yet they take pleasure in it anyway. That's what you call presuming on God. Amen. They know God's going to judge them, but yet they take the very pleasure of indulging in it anyway. Amen. You see, were it not for the gospel of Christ, we would be in this slavery of sin ourselves. We're not for the gospel of God. Amen. Thank be unto God for his unspeakable gift. Thank be unto God for his unspeakable gift. Amen. Now, as we unpack this here, a uh, second chapter, chapter two, uh, so from chapter two, verses one to three and eight, Paul, he turns the search light on his own people, the Jews. And he showed that they are equally condemned as sinners uh, before God. Okay? So in this chapter here, chapter 1 and verses 20, we'll see that he states that the Gentiles are without excuse. And, it, and here in chapter 2 and verse 1, he states that the Jews are without excuse. Amen? You see, so, so this news comes as a thunderbolt to these pri privileged Jews. Now, surely God, he would deal with them. Amen? He's going to deal with them and he's going to deal with us. You see? So, now, So uh, uh, throughout this study here, we'll see this, that they thought differently from the Gentiles. Amen? They thought God would deal with them differently from the Gentiles. But Paul says, no. The Jews are under the condemnation and wrath of God because God's principles of judgment are fair. Amen. All of God's principles and his judgments are fact. So, so in this chapter, he points out three divine principles of judgments that prove the Jews is equally condemned with the Gentiles. Amen. You see, God's judgment is according to God's truth. Amen. They're according to his truth. So, so here, uh, let us unpack these first five verses here in this second chapter. 
Amen. If you, if you follow along with me in your Bibles, and I pray that you are, I want you to go with me to these here first five verses here in chapter two. Okay. It says, Therefore thou art inexcusable, O man, whoever thou art that judges, for wherein thou judgest another, thou condemnest thyself. For thou that judgest doest the same thing. Verse 2, But we are sure that the judgment of God is according to truth against them which commit such things. Verse 3, And thinkest thou this, O man, that judgest them which do such things, and doeth the same? that thou shalt escape the judgment of God. Verse 4, our, uh, or, or, or despisest thou the riches of his goodness and forbearance and long suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God looketh thee, and rather leadeth thee to repentance. Verses 5, but after they, after thy hardness, an impenitent heart treasures up unto thyself wrath against the day of wrath and the revelation of the righteous judgment of God. Amen? Okay, let us talk about a little bit about what all this means. Now, as the Jew read Paul's indictment of the heathen here in, this first, in the first chapter, he must have smiled and said, serve them right. Amen. Serve them right. They got what they had come. Well, their attitude would have been that of the Pharisees over there uh, in that Luke chapter 18 and verses 9 through 14, where they said, I, I thank God that, they're, that they are not, that I am not like the other men. Amen? Kind of paraphrasing that from somewhere over there in Matthew, I mean Luke chapter 18 in verse 9 through 14. Amen? But Paul, he, he, he turns their judgment of the Gentiles right back up on them. And he said, you do the same thing. Amen? You do the same thing. The Gentiles do. So you are just as guilty. Amen? You are just as guilty. Remember I said here earlier too, over there in that, in the Romans chapter, over here in Romans chapter 2, in verse 11 through 16, which we'll show you here shortly, that where God says he is no respect of a person. So God, going he judge all sin. You see, there's none righteous. The Bible says no, not one. So there's nobody better than anybody else in the eyes of God. Amen. God, he will judge all of us fairly and he will judge us by his law and by his truth. Amen. You see, so, so you see, God's judgment of men is not according to hearsay or gossip or our good opinions, you see, of ourselves or, or, or man, evaluation of us. It is according to truth. You see, it, and, and, and verse 2 here, he said, someone has said, we hate our own faults. We hate our own faults, especially when we see them in others. Amen? So how easy it is for people today, even as in Paul's day, to condemn others. It's, it's very easy for us to condemn others, isn't it? Amen? And just kind of overlook our own faults. Okay? Now, yet, he said, yet they have the very same sins in their own lives. Amen? We can have some of the very same sins in our own lives, but yet we will condemn and judge someone else, you see? But the Jews, they may have argued back, well, surely God wouldn't judge us with the same truth he applies to the Gentiles. Why? See how good God has been to Israel? 
You see, they were ignorant of the purpose God had in mind when he poured out his goodness on Israel and waited so patiently for his people to obey. Amen? You see, his goodness was supposed to lead them to repentance. You see, many times it seems like the more God blesses us, it seems like sometimes the worse we get. The more he gives us, the worse we get. The more patient he is with us, the worse we get. Instead of repentance, we just keep on doing the same old thing, and many times worse. So instead, they, they, they hardened their hearts and thus stored up more wrath. Amen? For that day when Christ will judge the lost. That's what he tells us there in Revelation chapter 20. That he will judge the lost. Amen? You see? He said, have you not heard the lost sinners today say, oh, well, I'm sure God isn't going to send me to hell. Amen? You see, why? He's done so many good things for me. God is not going to send me to hell. Well, God don't want to send nobody to hell. And God don't send people to hell. You send yourself to hell. Amen? Hell wasn't created for us. Hell was created for Satan. Are y'all listening to what I'm saying? So, you see, little do they realize that God's goodness is the preparation for his grace, okay? And instead of bound in humble gratitude, they harden their hearts and commit more sin. Amen? Commits more and more sin. Thinking that God loved them too much to condemn them, you see? Thinking he loves them too much. Well, God loves us. He loves us more than anything he ever created. But God hates sin. Amen. He hates sin. Now, now these same two excuses that the Jews used in Paul's day. Amen. They are still heard today. One, I am better than others. There are people who think that. Amen. It's warped thinking, but there are people who think that they are better than others. So I don't so I don't need Christ. You see? I don't need to go to church. I don't need to pray. I don't have to give. Amen. And secondly, God has been good to me and will certainly never condemn me. You see? But God's final judgment will not be according to our opinions and our evaluation. It will be according to the truth. Amen? It will be according to the truth. You see, uh, it is according to a person's deeds. And I, I, I want to let us just kind of uh, read these next few verses here. We, we got about another. Give me, give me about another three or four minutes. Let's read these next few verses. I want to look at verses 6 through 16. And, and, and then we'll, that'll probably take us to where we're going to cut it off at. Verses 6 through 16. Who will render to every man according to his deeds? To them who, by patient, continuous, and well doing, seek for glory and honor and immorality, eternal life. Verse 8. But unto them that are continuous, and do not obey the truth, but obey unrighteousness, indignation, and wrath. Verse 9, tribulation and anguish upon every soul of man that doeth evil, of the Jew first, and also of the Gentile. Amen? And this word tribulation, that means trouble. Okay? But glory, honor, and peace to every man that worketh good, to the Jew first, and also to the Gentile. Verse 11, for there is no respect of person with God. Remember, I said, God said, there is, he, he is no respect of a person. 
You see verse 12. For as many as have sinned without uh, law shall also perish without law. And as many as have sinned in the law shall be judged by the law. Verse 13. For not the hearers of the law are just before God, but the doers of the law shall be justified. Verse 14. For when the Gentiles, which have not the law, do by nature the things contained in the law, these having not the law are a law unto themselves. Verse 15, which show the work of the law written in their hearts, their conscience also uh, bearing witness, and their thoughts the mean uh, while accusing, amen, or else excusing another. Verse 16 says, in the day when God shall judge the secret of men by Jesus Christ, according to my gospel. Amen. Now, we're going to have to pick back up on this right here next week. Okay, my time is up. We're going to pick back up here right here next week. Amen. And we stop here on the 16th verse, and we're going to pick back up on this next week, and we're going to talk about this. Amen. So mark it in your Bible where we stopped off at. And we'll pick back up uh, next week. And join the study throughout the week. Continue to study the book of Romans. Continue to study along with us. And, and we'll explain uh, as we go along. Amen. So I thank you for uh, sharing with us today. Thank you for uh, reading your Bibles and studying along with us uh, in these studies. Amen. Because these are some very good and powerful studies that we're going to be looking at throughout the book of Romans. Okay. So we're going to break it off here and we'll pick back up next week. Let us bow here. Dear Lord Jesus, we thank you for the privilege to have come into your presence. We thank you for, for what you have uh, shown us, dear Lord, throughout this study. We ask you, oh God, to continue to bless us, continue to give us a sense of your uh, peace, dear Lord, to give us wisdom and understanding, Father, that we may take your word and use your word, dear Lord, and uh, share it with someone else who don't know yet to be part of this thing. We ask your blessings upon those who do ask for prayer. We ask your blessings upon our country. We ask your blessings upon our church. And we ask you to continue to bless those uh, on our sick and our healing days. Continue to bless our pastor, dear Lord. Watch over, dear Lord, through the rest of this week until we come back again at the next appointed hour to study your word. We love you. We praise you. And we thank you for every spiritual blessing that you have given us in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. This we pray in your name and for your sake. Amen. God bless you. God keep you. Y'all have a blessed weekend. Stay safe and follow all of the safety protocols. God bless you. See you next week.